guys, welcome back to my uh, section known as Legends of Evil, and today I'm talking about pretty much a villain that kind of earns the title of Legendary, and I'm going back to the Gargoyles universe and talking about probably their most prominent villain right next to David Xanatos, and that villain is Demona. Now, Demona is pretty much, like I said, the, the main, the biggest, if not, well, one of the biggest, if not the biggest villain in the Gargoyle series, right next to, to David Xanatos. Demona is a probably, I don't know, like, I don't know where you'd rank her as, like, number two right behind Xanatos, or right in front of Xanatos, because 95% of what happens in Gargoyles is mostly her fault. Now, the origin of Demona was that she was Goliath's lover in uh, long ago. However, what we didn't know was that she felt mistreat. The gargoyles were being mistreated, whereas Goliath thought you know everything was fine, as, you know as long as they kept the peace. But Demona didn't like, didn't care much for these humans. And initially, her plan was she was going to betray the the uh, the castle to the Vikings, and that kind of turned out wrong because uh, the Vikings turned around and betrayed her and killed all the other ones except for Goliath and, of course, the rest of the clan. Well, what was the remainder of the, of, the, of the Gargoyle clan? Demona, scared by this and thinking that Goliath had been killed, she fled and later on found a group of, of uh, other Gargoyles that became a bunch of ravaging, uh, ravaging sca uh, scavengers while the years rolled by. Demona, of course, led these people and kind of like she hated humans and didn't really want to accept the fact that it was her fault that she caused all this. Later on in her years, she during her older years, because obviously gargoyles have a long lifespan, but obviously she was getting older, and what happened was that later on she would come across Macbeth, and Macbeth uh, allied him. Uh, she did. Well, she was very apprehensive, but eventually, be her and her gargoyles became allies to Macbeth. However, this is her per, her paranoia and her over her egotism to an extent caused this this alliance to go down uh, uh, go sour on the grounds of obviously she not only uh, ha helped create you know the curse that Macbeth was because earlier Macbeth gave uh, she gave half of her life force to Macbeth well like Macbeth gave half of his life to Demona to make her younger, and then they both became immortal, and only Macbeth and Demona can kill one another. So, in that regard, we had that. Not only that, she also helped create the 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 hunter, more or less. She, uh, she is the responsible for creating the hunter as well. So, not only did she help make Macbeth what he is, but also the hunter. So there you go. The lists of her own, of, uh, of her own sins just get worse and worse. Demona later on found her way to allying herself with Xanatos, who she attempted to betray and take over and make gargoyles the supreme race. She did try this plan several times over because, well, her and she Xanatos was the only ally she had, and even then she didn't like him. And she would inevitably try to betray him, um, you, turning the whole city into stone at one point with a spell. Now, the other thing was that she even employed the use of Puck, who was one of Oberon's children, to assist her, and of course we all know how that went, making, turning the gar humans into gargoyles, and yeah. Now, Demona is a master of multiple things. She's kind of like Doctor Doom in the sense that, she, you know, she's a jack-of-all-trades in the most scariest way possible. What I mean is, she is a master of science and magic. She has spent hun she, since thanks to her immortality, Demona has had hundreds of years to, if not thousands of years, to pretty much learn all of you know all these different types of magics and spells and incantations, as well as understand and utilize technology. She even tried to create a virus that would wipe out humanity and leave gargoyles safe, thanks to the help of the praying gar the statue known as the praying gargoyle. So she kind of employs, uh, in some of her schemes, a bit of magic and technology. Among other things, Demona, like I said, obviously she's incredibly intelligent. She's she's had thousands of years of experience 
And, yeah, she's a, like all gargoyles, she's incredibly strong, she's faster, more agile, and she can fly, of course. Demona would also uh, go on to ally herself with Phalon, Gar uh, Goliath's clone created by Xanatos, and, however, that kind of turned sour as well later on down the, lo uh, d later on down the line, where uh, Thalog was like, <laughs> fuck you, bitch, I got Delilah. <laughs> um... So yeah, once again, Demona is a... I've said this before about Demona, is that she's a very Shakespearean tragic villain. She creates her own demons, more or less, and she refuses to acknowledge that she has, you know, she has made the world what it is because it's her fault. She made all of her own problems on her own ground. Uh, it's, it, it, it's, uh, it's tragic because even when, you know, the Weird Sisters showed her all of her past sins, when they broke her out of that, of that, and uh, they basically pulled her out of it from that, uh, from revealing herself, she was like, no, you obviously tricked me and, you know, cast some kind of spell to make me think that way, and flew off. Demona is uh, sadly never going to change. She's always going to be this tyrannical, bloodthirsty, and human-hating being. Um, so, that's just a, that is just a terrifying and tragic concept, because... She still wants Goliath to see things her way. She wants to see... Um, she wants to have Goliath at her side. She at least also wants her daughter at her side. And she kind of, it, she kind of feels herself as like this oppressed free freedom fighter to an extent. Again, it's very tragic, but the other side you're like, man, you are a flaming bitch, you know that? <laughs> um, among other things, another thing she was granted was that she could go out in the daytime this was caused when Puck, when she summoned Puck to do her bidding, and one of the things she wanted was to um, go out in the daytime. However, she kind of, it, at towards the end uh, of the of the story, Puck, uh, she wanted Puck to leave, and Puck was like, "Well, you're, you've been such a kind guest. I've never had this much fun in ages. What do you want?" And she was like, "You know, go, go the fuck away. I don't want to see you anymore." Puck, obviously offended by this, was like, "You know what?" Originally, you talked about wanting to go out in the sunlight. All right, here you go. And she now has a human form that causes her great pain to transform back into her true gargoyle self at night. She went under the she then took on the identity of Dominique Destine, which was, I think, if I remember right, an identity she used even before uh, she took on she had a human form. With her new human form, she could be she could more or less. Uh, she could more or less go out in the sunlight and even show herself as Dominique Destine. But other than that, uh, another another little thing that has kind of caused her magical hurt is that whenever uh, Macbeth feels pain, or vice versa, or, you know, she feels pain, Macbeth feels it as well. They're, like I said earlier, they are connected for all eternity until one kills the other. And Demona doesn't really want to die, but Macbeth really wants to. He... It's kind of the things that he's like, well, I've lived too long, and, you know, you've caused a lot of suffering, and it's kind of been my fault, so, yeah, I'm gonna kill you, bitch. <laughs> and, yeah. Um, so that kind uh, that kind of shows that, you know, that their, her immortality is only has a certain extent to it. Um, but, yeah, like I said, she can still feel pain, so keep that in mind. But yeah, the other, among other things, Demona has she's tried. She's actually gotten very close in numerous occasions to uh, uh, <laughs> to basically to basically world domination or the a, more or less the extinction of mankind. As I said, she tried to create that virus that uh, almost wiped, that was wiping out humanity and would protect gargoyles. Uh, the other time was like the City of Stone, where she cast a spell that turned all of New York into, all the humans of New York, into living statues. Um, <clears throat> among other things, she even, tr again, working with Thalog, she nearly uh, uh, got away with marrying uh, Macbeth in her f disguise of Dominique Destine, and, tried, and almost got all of his riches, and would sell and give them all to Thalog. Of course, Thalog, being the ever uh, the bastard that he is, was just going to dump her anyway, and 
take all the weaponry and money that Macbeth had, had accumulated throughout his centuries of living. That's the other thing, is that a lot of people seem to forget that, uh, that Demona, over the years, also got pretty rich. She also, thanks to her identity as, as Destine, she managed to accumulate that, a lot of money. She accumulated a, a lot of money over her years, because obviously, if you're that old, you've got you to be picking up some economic prowess along the way, I'm just saying. Uh, her house is filled with ancient relics that she guards, and even, it's kind of alluded to that her house is guarded, you know, has the best security, not only the best technological security, but also has some magical assistance as well. So keep that in mind, is that her house is, a my is technologically and mystically protected. Um, but again, Demona is, again, her own worst enemy. I can't stop bringing that up, as always, you know. She is... <laughs> She's just a bad girl, and it's all her fault. It will always be all her fault. So, yeah. Tragic villain, uh, tragic villain, but epic villain at the same time. Almost like the same thing with Magneto. However, Magneto didn't cause half the problems he started. Um, all the pro He just got the worst of humanity. Kind of like Demona in the case that Demona received the worst of humanity, but you can't help deny that, you know, she obviously caused some of the problems herself. Well, most of the problems herself. Whereas Magneto uh, experienced the worst of humanity and still tried to make the best of himself, but in inevitably could not do that. So I guess that's where the only difference is that, you know, they're both, the only thing they have in common is that uh, they both want the best of their species, uh, what's best for their species, and Homo sapiens can go fuck themselves. In a nutshell. <laughs> anyway. So yeah, there's a uh, um, that's pretty much the all the stuff I'm going to, I can say about Demona. Because what else can you say about Demona? She's such a great villain. When you think gargoyle villains, you obviously think her or Xanatos. Uh, they are the first ones that come to your mind. So yeah, uh, once as always, I just give you guys the cliff notes for these villains, and I hope you guys enjoyed me talking about Demona. And yeah, uh, once again, I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I'm out.